Good morning. Today we are going to see about the fundamentals of robot manipulability. The outline of today's lecture will be as follows. First we see the definition of manipulability ellipsoid and the manipulability measure. Then we see the best configurations of manipulators based on manipulability index. In that we see the examples tooling planar manipulator, SCARA type manipulator, Puma manipulator and the four jointed robotic finger. Then we see the various indices of manipulability measure and then finally the research work done by Yokogawa and Hara in 2004 for object translation motion the manipulability analysis of the human thumb and index finger. First coming to the manipulability ellipsoid definition first we see an n degrees of freedom manipulator given by It's a n degrees of freedom manipulator where the link lengths are L1, L2, and L3 up to Ln. We can see that the joint angles are Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, and it goes so that the end of the vector is given by x, which is equal to x1, x2 up to xm transpose. Similarly, the joint angle vector is given by q equal to q1, q2, q3 up to qn transpose. So, the size of the end of vector position is m cross 1 whereas the size of the joint space is n cross 1. So, for this situation when we see the definition of manipulability ellipsoid it is given by the definition the set of all end effector velocities v which are realizable by the joint angular velocity such that the Euclidean norm of the joint angular velocity is less than equal to 1 that is the end effector velocity will lead to an ellipsoid whereas the joint angular velocities are confined by a sphere. In the joint space they are sphere whereas in the Cartesian space it is an ellipsoid. Now in that what is observed or what is inferred is in the direction of the major axis of the ellipsoid the end effector that is the tip of the manipulator moves at high speed whereas in the direction of the minor axis of the ellipsoid the end effector moves at lesser speed. If the end effector is almost a sphere if the ellipsoid is almost a sphere then the end effector that is the tip of the manipulator can move in all directions uniformly. Also the larger the ellipsoid is the faster the end effector can move. Now the manipulability ellipsoid is given by V transpose J pseudo inverse transpose J pseudo inverse into V which is less than equal to 1 how it is obtained Q dot square is less than equal to 1 which is Q dot transpose Q dot less than equal to 1 whereas Q dot is given by J pseudo inverse V. So, Q dot transpose is V transpose J pseudo inverse transpose then J pseudo inverse V. Okay. So, this is less than equal to 1 this is V. So, that is what we have seen here this is the expression for manipulability ellipsoid which is less than equal to 1 that means uh, the joint angular velocities are confined to be within a spherical shape. Now coming to the principal axis of the manipulability ellipsoid they are found by decomposing the Jacobian matrix J using singular value decomposition. So by decomposing we get J equal to 
S V D transpose the Jacobian matrix J is decomposed into three matrices S V and D where S and D are respectively an n cross m m cross m and n cross n orthogonal matrices whereas the matrix V is an n cross n matrix defined by a diagonal singular values rest all the elements are 0 where the last row is a 0 vector where the singular values alpha 1 is greater than equal to alpha 2 which is greater than equal to alpha m which is greater than equal to 0. The scalars alpha 1, alpha 2 and up to alpha m are called the singular values of the Jacobian J and are equal to the m larger values of the n roots that is they are equal to alpha i is equal to root of lambda i where lambda i is the scalar is the eigen value of the matrix j transpose j. Further let s i small s i be the ith column of the vector s or the matrix s. Then the principal axis of the manipulative ellipsoid is given by sigma i s i, where sigma i is the radius along the principal axis and s i is the direction of that principal axis. And hence with this the principal axis of the entire manipulative ellipsoid is given by alpha 1 s 1, alpha 2 s 2 up to alpha m s m which is what shown in this schematic. From the properties of pseudo inverse we say that j pseudo inverse is equal to d v pseudo inverse s transpose where v pseudo inverse is the pseudo inverse of v given by this matrix where we have the diagonal elements being the inverse of all the singular values ranging from alpha 1 to alpha m inverse where the last row is a 0 vector for the v pseudo inverse. We consider the following orthogonal transformation of d such that d tilde is equal to S transpose D which is equal to the column of D i tilde. Then by the equation of the manipulative ellipsoid we have summation of alpha i which is not equal to 0 1 by alpha i square D i tilde square is less than equal to 1. This is an extra information we obtain from this theory. Now the direction of the principal axis is given by S i whereas the radius in that direction is given by alpha i and hence finally the principal axis again are given by alpha 1 s 1 alpha 2 s 2 up to alpha m s m. Then the manipulability in terms of the singular values is given by manipulative measure is given by all w equal to the product of all the singular values that is w equal to alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha 3 to alpha m product. The manipulative measure W has the following properties for the non redundant manipulator the manipulative measure is given by the expression root of determinant of J J transpose of course J is a function of the joint variable Q when it is a non redundant manipulator that means M size of the Cartesian space dimension is equal to the degrees of freedom of the robot manipulator then we have the manipulability measure given by W equal to determinant of the Jacobian matrix. Generally W that is a manipulative measure greater than equal to 0 holds and if the manipulability measure is 0 that means the rank of the Jacobian matrix is deficient which leads to the singular configuration. Now coming to the best configurations of robotic mechanisms from the viewpoint of manipulability. First let us consider here 2 degrees of freedom planar or or manipulator that is revolute joint here revolute joint both the joints are revolute joint and hence a uh, joint variable is theta 1 and theta 2 and the link 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 lengths are given here as L1 and L2. So let us consider this manipulator 2 link or or planar manipulator when the position is x and x, x and y for the end effector which is used for R, the Jacobian matrix is given by J equal to which is shown here minus L1 S1 minus L2 S12 and the second element of the first row is minus L2 S12. How we get this? This one is obtained by J equal to do R by that is do x by do 
q 1 do x by do q 2. Similarly, the second row is do y by do q 1 and do y by do q 2 this is what. So, if you differentiate the x which is here the x tip is l 1 cos theta 1 plus l 2 cos theta 1 2. Similarly, y equal to l 1 s sin theta 1 plus l 2 sin theta 1 2. If you differentiate this with respect to joint variable you get this expression. Similarly, you differentiate the x expression with respect to q 2 you get minus l 2 sin theta 1 2 that is what is shown here for the Jacobian matrix. Now, the manipulative measure for this planar robot which is a non redundant manipulator where m equal to n that is the size of the dimension of the Cartesian space is x and y which is equal to the dimension of the joint space which is the degrees of freedom of the robotic system. So, 2 equal to 2. So, that is why it is a, a non redundant manipulator and hence the manipulative measure is given by w equal to determinant of j which is l 1 l 2 sin theta 2 determinant. So, what is observed here is the manipulator takes its optimal configuration when theta 2 is equal to plus or minus 90 degree for any given values of l 1 l 2 and theta 1 that is when this joint angle is 90 that is this angle is 90 then we have the manipulative measure being very high. What is manipulability? The manipulating ability or the manipulating capability of the manipulator is very high. Graphically what we observed is the manipulability measure value takes from 0 to 1 and it is coming with this profile with this configuration having the ellipsoid being maximum volume or the area of the ellipse is very high with this corresponding posture of the tip of the manipulator. The x axis is the tip of the manipulator and the y axis is the manipulative measure value and the configurations corresponding to the tip of the manipulator is shown here at each tip you can see that the posture of the ellipse is varying also the volume of the ellipse or the area of the ellipse is varying. So, this shows that in this configuration the ellipse is very high and also having larger area ellipse and you can see that this posture and corresponding to this value the manipulability measure is close to 1 that is why this posture is called the optimal posture for this two link planar manipulator. Similarly, now we go to the next manipulator ok before that we just to see how the human finger behaves with the manipulability measure concept. So, when we grab a finger grab a pen as shown in the figure we see that the three link planar manipulator where this is the tip. You see that this is the configuration we hold generally for writing posture where the index finger behaves as a three link planar manipulator will have the optimal configuration here in terms of manipulability measure. We consciously choose this configuration in order to have the writing posture whereas, we will not choose this configuration which is called extended configuration which is almost close to the singular configuration of the three link planar manipulator. We will never use this configuration for writing posture or this flexed configuration in writing posture. We never use this configuration rather this configuration we use this configuration which is the best configuration in the writing posture in terms of manipulability measure. Similarly, for the arm that is the arm containing the biceps and the forearm the upper arm and the forearm being at 90 degree theta 2 being at 90 degree plus or minus 90 degree we have the optimal configuration in order to 
have a writing posture by the arm. We never use this configuration either the straight one or it is called extended or the completely flexed configuration. We never use this configuration or this configuration for the writing posture. This is also optimal configuration where the humans consciously take while before writing. And now coming to the best configuration of the robotic mechanisms example is the scara manipulator. Scara manipulator is the one which has 4 degrees of freedom and the configuration is such that it has the first two joints revolute and the third joint being prismatic and the fourth being revolute joint. So, the manipulative measure is given by the Jacobian matrix is given by this one which is of size we take only the position of the tip that is J p basically it is where J is constituting J p and J o. It can be divided like this that is the first portion of the Jacobian matrix is for linear velocity and the last three portion are meant for orientation. So, we just take the position part of the Jacobian matrix and the manipulative here is given by again L 1 L 2 sin theta 2. Again the best configuration of this manipulator is at theta 2 plus or minus 90 degree. Schematically it is shown here this is a scara manipulator the first two joints are or which is same as the planar manipulator and here you can see that the force manipulative ellipsoids are shown here. So, force manipulability ellipsoid is such that more force is exerted in the minor axis of the kinematic manipulability ellipse or ellipsoid. That means, uh, force ellipsoids major axis is equal to the minor axis of the kinematic ellipsoid and the minor axis of the force ellipsoid is equal to the major axis of the kinematic ellipsoid that is a concept you can understand. And now, coming to the Puma type again the Puma type manipulator is the one with the 6 degrees of freedom all being the revolute joints and here you can see that the best configuration of the Puma manipulator is obtained with this concept where L 2 L 3 where L 3 is the variable which is given by y into L 2 where y can take 0.5 1 and 2 for these configurations of L 3 we get the best configuration 1 2 and 3 configurations based on manipulative measure. Now, coming to the four joint robotic finger we see that in the joint 1 which is abduction adduction and joint 2 flexion extension joint 3 flexion extension and joint 4 flexion extension. So, all this flexion extension are in a plane and this one is covering the circular trajectory of the by this first degrees of freedom. So, in this situation we have the Jacobian matrix given by this expression for the tip or the position of the manipulator. It is a redundant manipulator because we have three dimensions say x, y and z of the end effect tip will be matched by theta 1, theta 2, theta 3 and theta 4 variables. So, 4 to 3. So, 1 degrees of freedom is extra which is why it is called redundant manipulator and here the manipulative measure which is a function of theta 2, theta 3 and theta 4 is given by root of determinant of j j transpose and the best configuration is given by this configuration in terms of the manipulability measure. As you can see this is the posture where it takes the greater value of manipulability measure which is the value 0 0.28 and this is the three dimensional view of the ellipsoid. These schematics are taken from the reference Sunio Yoshikawa book which is called foundations of robotics. 
1990. All right. So now, various indices of manipulability we see that W1, which is the manipulability measure, which represents the volume of the ellipsoid, manipulability ellipsoid, and the other indices, uh, index called W2, which is the ratio of the minimum radius to the maximum radius of the ellipsoid closer to unity this index is the more spherical the ellipsoid is. If the ellipsoid is a sphere then the tip that is the end effector can move in all directions uniformly and if the ellipsoid is a bigger one it can move at greater speed. An index of this directional uniformity of the ellipsoid and is independent of its size and coming to the other index W3 which is the smallest radius, the minimum radius of the ellipsoid alpha m. This gives the upper bound of the magnitude of velocity at which the end effector can move in any direction. So, this is the giving a bound of the end effector tip velocity and W4 which is the nth root of the manipulability measure W1 which is a volume of the ellipse, ellipsoid is a geometric mean of the radii alpha 1 to alpha m and is equal to the radius of the sphere whose volume is same as that of the ellipsoid. Now, coming to the research study on human digits, first first based on the human uh, manipulability measure, the human study is performed by Yokogawa and Hara in 2004. So, they have performed the tip pinch involving human thumb and index finger for object translation of a fine object. So, they have performed with an aim to investigate how the human subjects affect the manipulabilities of these two digits, digits during cooperative translation motion of a small fine object with 20 human subjects. They have for performed a strenuous study with 20 human subjects based on three criteria of manipulability measure, major axis direction angle of the manipulability ellipsoid and the ratio of the minor over major axis length, the collective behavior of the digits was studied. It was found that from their study, the thumb was acting passively whereas, the index finger is an active digit. They have considered the three postures, one is the extended posture and the other one is the flexed posture, uh, intermediate posture and the last one is the very flexed posture. Precisely extended posture, intermediate posture and flexed posture or flexion posture, posture 1, posture 2 and posture 3. And uh, what they found is the criterion, each criterion varies significantly from one posture to another portion, posture 1 to posture 2, posture 2 to posture 3, they have a greater variation of the criterion for the active digit for the index finger, it is more compared to that of the thumb. Here you can see that the thicker line, the darker line is the ellipse of the index finger and the ash color or the gray color is the one for the thumb. You can see that variation of the index finger ellipsoid ellipse is more compared to that of the thumb in the major axis direction angle criteria. Similarly, they have the ratio criterion where they also have the index finger has greater change. The difference between the mean value of the criterion change from one posture to another posture is greater for the index finger whereas, it is not so great compared to that of the index finger in the thumb case. And hence, second reinforced statement research observation that the index finger is active. Finally, they taken the variable that is the uh, major axis direction angle also having greater change compared to that of the thumbs variation of this criterion and the manipulative measure which is the third criteria 
criterion which is also having for the index finger greater 1 as compared to that of the thumb, but the subjects significantly have some difference compared to all the 20 subjects. And thank you so much. The references which I have taken for this lecture is from Sunio Ishikawa, which is the foundation of robotics analysis and control, the MIT Press, Cambridge, Massachusetts, 1990. And the other research topic is from the reference Yokogawa and Hara. Topic is manipulabilities of the index finger and thumb in three tip pinch portions. Journal of Biomechanics, Engineer, Biomechanical Engineering, and this is the reference precisely given here. With this, I wind this lecture. Thank you.